A lot of you guys are asking about churning content and can I explain uh, more about what I'm doing and how I'm making the changes uh, in the tuning software to achieve some of the results. So what we're gonna be doing today, guys, we've got this 128 cubic inch breakout here. Now it has been tuned elsewhere, uh, and currently in that in this setup, it is making uh, 132 and 147. So just don't wanna show the shop name on there, but look, 132, 147. Now the graph looks great. There's nothing really wrong with it at all. Uh, and the customer is just asking about it because he doesn't think it's uh, as nice as it, he thought it might have been. So we're gonna take a look at it. What we're gonna do, uh, we're using, uh, well the bike is being trimmed with uh, Techno Research's direct link. So this, uh, the latest one of these with the clear cap, it allows us to, uh, the, the tune file is saved to it. We can pull it out uh, and have a look at it. So uh, we're gonna pull the tune up, take a look at exactly what's going on, well just with what the calibration currently is. Uh, and we're also going to baseline it before we do anything to it. We're going to baseline it on my dyno to see exactly how it compares to these numbers. And then I will retune it, obviously, and uh, see how much power we gain from the baseline on this dyno to when I'm finished on this dyno. So that will give the most accurate comparison as to the, the gains that we get here. So let's pull this tune out. We'll take a look at it. Now let's, if we open this, and we have a look at our file here. Now we want the last one, so you can see there's a d the date modified here, so the 13th of June at 2.47, 18th of the 10th, 2022, and 16th of the 6th, so at 9.44. So this is the latest one here. We wanna open that up, that's the one that's in the bike, and let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Let's just go straight to the AFR table. Okay, so I can see basically from here, that's all 13.9, that's 13.8 down there. There's no closed loop going on, so the O2 sensors are not putting feedback into the ECM for short-term and long-term fuel trim. Uh, you can see here we've got a nice target of 12.8 uh, here. The center, 13.9, this is okay. Now, don't because there's no closed loop, let's just talk about that real quick. Uh, typically, I would set a closed loop section uh, on something like this, just in around this area here, just so the O2 sensors are giving feedback to the ECM, just to try and help run this thing as efficient as possible. Guys get too focused on this AFR stuff, they think it's gotta be rich, it's air cool motor. Look, these motors will run at 14.5 all day at light load, you know, light RPM, like probably 3,000 getting up there, but you know, this cruise area here, where you spend 95% of your time, you want this to old in. That's at 13.9. As long as the VEs are dialed into these targets, like as long as the you know the VEs are reflecting of this target, we should be okay. Uh, personally, I would set this here to 12 point. The idea of giving a um, an air fuel table is you want it as flat as possible. So we want to see uh, we don't want to see too many changes throughout. It's it is pretty good through there. Like yeah, 13.8, 39, 39, 13.7, 13.5, 13.2, 13.8, 13.9, 13.10, 13.11, 13.12, 13.13, 13.14, 13.15, 13.16, 13.17, 13.18, 13.19, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 
that's there's way too much fuel there to start with. Uh, it needs to be you know there's twenty percent probably got to take take taken out of there. But uh, I can see that if that's if that's true to the target, that's way too rich. But uh, the roll on here, there's some big pikes spikes and troughs through there. Big gully in it there. This area doesn't look too bad here, where the idle and your sort of cruising speed is, but it is quite rich the next column across. So as long as the VE uh, is accurate there, we'll be okay. We won't know until we start looking at it, but rear cylinder, we'll just have a quick look at it as well as a graph. Yeah, again, a lot of fuel right here. Where the mouse is, that's got to be taken out. There's way too much up here. Uh, again, this is all speculation. As long as that, if the VEs are true to the target, there's way too much fuel there. I can just tell that already. Um, that's not too bad, there's a bit of a hole there. Anyway, look, we'll have a look. And the timing, let's take a look at the timing. Just the rear, it's probably saying, oh, it's got a bit there, so it's got 30 degrees in it. They're obviously looking for power. You can see the 27 degrees there. So someone's done this uh, with a, an idea of what they're doing. There's probably not enough timing here to start with. Probably want a little bit more than that there. Uh, it does step up pretty well. There's a big jump there. So take a look at this, so from 18 degrees, to 27 that's a huge jump that is as nine degrees in in timing there that's huge it shouldn't be that big uh, and again typically I'll set both columns 95 and 100 to the same so when I'm tuning here when you go down to see a level it's going to jump over there and you're going to see the ECM seeing the same thing uh, so that's as a blanket to, to cover all all uh, environments but yeah I can see uh, if we just have a look at this as a graph too we'll see just how uh, not fun it looks i'll bring that out for you so you can see here there's a big as you roll on like there's a hole there in the chip like right where you're sort of cruising and then as you roll on there's a good amount of timing and then it falls over and then it kicks back up it's just very erratic we, we don't want that at all uh, you can see there's not much going on here this is going to probably feel very flat through the roll on we want to lift this section here up tidy it up blend this all in it's going to take a little bit of work but uh hopefully with some um Time in the dyno here, we'll get this thing looking real. That shouldn't be stepped up as much there. We should have a nice sort of ramp as it ramps up and comes on. So anyway, we'll keep um, keep going here. We'll just have a look at a few other things um, to see what it's set up at. Uh, immediately, it gives you the injector size there, the cubic inch, the speedo's maxed out. So that's all good. A couple other things we'll look at here, the throttle progressivity. It's not been enabled, so it may feel very lethargic. We enable that. So this table here is representing what we're doing at the twist grip. So... Uh, that's just not, and this table is not get, getting looked at at the moment, it's just defaulting back to the OEM setting. If we enable this, we can then, which I will and always do, uh, we can then look at this table and it then knows at 15% throttle at 22,000 RPM, I'm actually, if at the input at the twist grip sensor is actually applying 15% at the throttle blade. So when that is not enabled, there's a slight retard through there. So, you know, 15% at 2000 RPM may only be about 10 or 11% throttle. So if we add that, uh, if we enable this table, that allows the ECM to look at it, and then we can really dial and get uh, Active settings, so yeah, we've got the speed limit turned off. Everything else is all okay there. ACRs are turned on. The engine idle temperature management system is turned off. That resets the, uh, shuts off the rear cylinder when it gets hot, just to save fuel and heat. Um, just a quick overview here, guys. Just have a look at some pretty standard doesn't look like anything's changed there to be honest it's the IAC that's how much idle air control uh, is um, going on but guys let's uh, what we're going to do we're going to baseline this thing now and we'll see what it makes result it is uh, a little bit lower than I thought it would have been but let's have a look nonetheless 122 and 145 and 124 and 145 now if we have a look at our AFR ratio this is our front cylinder and this is our rear cylinder 
Now it is really, really not that bad, guys. This is very good, to be honest. It's, it's, it, it's not bad at all. This is spot nice and flat. Uh, it could just do a little bit of tweaking here. There's way too much for you. You could pull some out there. Add a little bit here. Just, just blend that, just fuss a little bit. It's really, really not that bad. Whoever's done this has done a pretty good job. I forgot to mention too, folks, during that, what you were seeing before when the AFRs were down at 12 to 1 when we were cruising along and, you know, at the cruise speeds where you are 95% of the time and you're riding along down the highway, at 12 to 1, that is way too rich. We should be targeting 14.5, something like that, when we just light load cruising down the highway. That's And that's where we get our fuel efficiency from. So uh, we'd have to address that too. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, we're going to fix it all up and make this thing run a lot better. Uh, what is uh, a little bit alarming on the data here, so this is our uh, knock retard here, it is pulling a lot of timing out. You can see here it's pulling almost, you know, it's eight degrees or so there, uh, three, six to seven, eight degree. You can see where it ramps up. That's probably that kick in the RPM I was talking about. So you can see as our RPM builds when we do the, the, the run. Uh, this here, the throttle position, you can remember on the table I was talking about because it's still not enabled, it's looking at the factory settings. I've given it wide open throttle, but you can see the throttle blade hasn't opened right up until it gets up into the rev range a little bit. So we will address that. Uh, yeah, let's just get this timing addressed. You can see that's most likely due to that big nine degree or eight, eight or nine degree kick in the uh, spark curve we saw. All right, guys, well, let's talk you through some of the changes that I'm gonna be making and we'll see what the data shows and what the figures show at the end. So I'm going to talk you through what I've done here. So uh, this is what our uh, spark table looked like on the rear. So let's bring that up. That's what the ignition table looked like. Right, so you can see a big difference. So I've just adjusted everything throughout the entire area and smoothed it right out. Got rid of that big step that was in there and uh, really tied it up. So what I've done, just gone through the entire area here, tied it all up. You can see there, that's pretty much what we're dealing with. Uh, the AFR table. So I've just got a closed loop section turned on in here. Uh, the rest of it here, 13.9, 13.8, 13.5, 13.12.8 .8, 13, 13, from 90 map on. So it's all targeting the same, no matter if it's this column, that column, or that column. So. If I'm here, great. If I'm here, great. If I'm down at sea level, great. It's all the same. So, and it's the same with adjusting the VE. So when we do the VEs, uh, we adjust 90 and 100. So, you know, we're just, we're blanketing the whole area. You can see the differences here. Again, I was talking earlier, there's heaps of fuel needs to be taken out because it's adjusted there at 79% and here it's got 105. So we really, we're gonna blend that into, we're gonna make our uh, VE tables look as nice and smooth as our spark table. But uh, that's where we're at so far. guys we're all done we've got an incredible result to go through and have a look at so let's just dive straight into it and then I'm going to talk you through uh, what I did on the tables show you the difference and uh, hopefully this is as best as I can do to try and tell you what I'm doing to, to make these things you know to, to tune them up so let's have a look at our result I'll turn this around right so we wrote in there the baseline of 122 145 you can see now 130 horsepower, 153 foot-pounds of torque. Now, most of that came from the ignition timing, guys. It's uh, incredible to see just how much you know power. Like, let's have a look here at the hit. You know, we've oh, it's 20. You know, what have we got there? 114, 116. You know, there's almost 20 foot-pounds of difference right there at the hit. At, you know, just after 200, uh, 2,000 RPM, 2,250 thereabouts. 
Yeah, huge increase there, lifted throughout, so through the mid-range here, what have we got? You know, almost 10 foot pounds there, right in the middle, and just elevated everything right up. Just as a bonus run too, guys, this little um, this little pod filter that everyone um, likes to remove straight away. It, it, I mean, that's performed quite well, but we took it off nonetheless. So over here, and you can see we went up to 134. Uh, if we just get rid of our baseline, so this is just the two graphs compared. So filter on, filter off. Filter on is the blue run, and no air filter, you can see there. So while we did make a little bit more power right at the top, I think I've talked about this in, in another video, guys, but uh, that little bit of power right up there that we gained from the filter, filter being off or a higher flowing filter in this particular application, that little bit of gain that we get there is probably not worth the sacrifice in torque down low where you use it most of the time. So uh, look, while it's uh, tuned up really, really well and I'm very happy with it, these little uh, Vance and Hines short shots and that uh, Screaming Eagle Heavy Breather have really delivered on this one. So look, let's uh, let's go through the uh, the tuning stuff and I'll show you what I did. If you remember what the, um, the VE tables looked like at the start, hopefully I can do some editing to give you a quick quick look between the two but that's what we look like now nice and smooth tidied right up no big bumps or holes or anything and I think it's silly going on everything's blended in nicely same on our spark tables again I think I talked about that earlier in the video but nice and smooth all looking really good uh, the AFR table that's the final one there so a little bit richer at the idle. This is, I started off, you may remember, I started off what it looked like, but this is now richened up the idle area here. Uh, again, the closed loop section, gonna be nice and efficient on fuel. And I mean, the thing just makes great power. I mean, we've richened up here. You can see the gradient sort of shows what everything's sort of looking at as, as a very similar number. So the table, while it's got, this is where you spend most of your time. Here. roll on a little bit but then heavy roll-ons you know from 60 map and on or above you know 70 80 90 when the demand is high we want more fuel so this area is safe as houses to run at a nice closed loop uh, value like that to get the most efficiency out of it it's really hard I'm probably not the best teacher to try and film and explain and chat like yeah you, you kind of need to want to know this stuff to really want to learn it like I can tell you black to your blue in the face about what to do, but if you don't want to learn it and you don't want to understand it, it's just not going to work. So uh, I love doing it and I'm still still learning a lot about tuning as the the evolution of these things change, the, you know, the, the ECM's changing. There's always stuff coming on. I think it's great because you don't want to get, you don't want to get static. You don't want to get stuck there just thinking, oh, I know what I'm doing. And you always want to keep learning, keep pushing, and keep trying to get as much power out of these things as you can so we can really stay on the leading the leading edge and try and get as much out of these things as possible but hope it helped guys any questions leave them in the comments i'll get back to you and uh, i'll see you next time